Hey guys, it's me. It's Joshua from the future. Uh, could you tell? I'm a little bit grayer than Joshua in the past. The reason you're seeing my face today is that this is a re-upload of uh, the video from two days ago about VTX tables. I don't normally do this, but I got some answers to some of the questions I raised in that video, and I didn't want to have the information scattered between two videos. If you already watched the video from yesterday about VTX tables, there is a link uh, to the timestamp down in the video description where the new information is so I don't waste your time watching the same stuff over again. And if you didn't see yesterday's video, then just enjoy. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. You're here because you just installed Betaflight 4.1 and your smart audio doesn't work. You used to be able to change your video transmitter channel and power using the OSD or maybe the Lua script, and now suddenly it doesn't work. In fact, you may even be getting a message, no VTX table configured. In this video, I'm going to tell you why Betaflight broke your smart audio, how to get it working again, and I'm going to make an argument that it was a good thing. We'll see if I convince you. My goal is to answer every single question you could possibly have about Betaflight 4.1. And in order to do that, I'm making videos like this and I'm putting them in a playlist linked down in the video description. It's my Betaflight 4.1 Q&A tutorial playlist. And after you're done watching this video, I hope you'll check that out and see all the other content I've made about Betaflight 4.1. So let's get into VTX tables. Here's the problem that VTX tables are trying to solve. Have you ever gone into the smart audio menu, like in your in your OSD, and you see that the output power in that menu doesn't actually match the output power that your VTX is capable of doing? The reason for that is that the smart audio parameters, the output power and so forth, they are hard-coded in Betaflight. And they're hard-coded to match, I think it's the original TBS Unify. So what happens when Smart Audio says, give me 800 milliwatts, but your VTX only goes up to 400 milliwatts? The answer is, it's just up to the VTX to decide what to do with that. And that's a problem. It's just confusing for you to not know what output power your VTX is going to. In order to resolve this confusion, the Betaflight devs have created the VTX tables function. And the VTX tables function lets you define the exact channels and output powers that your VTX supports. And this is a good thing for you because now when you go to the Smart Audio menu, you will see the exact output powers and the exact channels and bands that your VTX actually supports. But it's annoying because you have to actually do it by hand. So how do you do that? You do that by going to the Video Transmitter tab in Betaflight Configurator. You need to be using Configurator 10.6 and you need to be using Betaflight 4.1. And you can see right here, I get the message, your VTX is not configured, so you can't modify the VTX values for here. So I got to go to the Ports tab and I got to set one port to use either TBS Smart Audio or Immersion RC Tramp, I see. So let's do that. And I get this warning. The VTX table has not been set up correctly, so you will not be able to use VTX control. Let's save and reboot. And we'll go into the video transmitter tab. And now from here, we can tell Betaflight what VTX table we want it to use. Now, if you're a super geek like me, you can actually go in and set this up manually, but you don't have to do that. Let me show you how to do it manually, and then I'll show you the easier way. So I'm going to say, I'm going to have, let's say, two bands and eight channels per band. Okay, I can name those, whatever I want. Okay, well, letter F, band, letter R. And then I can input the exact frequencies that I want. And this is pretty cool because, like, what if you want IMD6? which is a band that's commonly used for racing. You could add that, even though it's a mixture of Fat Shark and Race Band. You could just create custom bands with any frequencies you want. 
Now, it's pretty stupid for you to have to type in all the frequencies for F band and R band, and in fact, you don't have to do that. For any of the predefined factory bands like F band, R band, A band, you just want to enable this tick mark here. And Smart Audio will say to the video transmitter, give me F band channel one, and the video transmitter just knows what that is. You only need to put the frequencies in manually if you are a masochist, or if you want to create a custom band that is not a factory band. Like for example, let's say we're going to create IMD6 and we'll call that um, 6. How about that? And looking at this article from PropWashed, I found IMD6 channels. They're going to be 5658, 5695, 5760, 5800, 5880 and 5917. Now, if you have one of many common video transmitters, you can actually get a configuration file pre-made by clicking on this link right here. And here we'll see VTX tables for the Immersion RC Tramp, the various smart audio revisions and so forth. So for example, the USA Smart Audio 2.1 file is, let's just uh, download that. Save link as, yeah, we'll save that. And then we'll go load from file. We'll go desktop and we'll load that file in and ba-bam, here is the standard channel set for uh, Smart Audio 2.1 in the United States. Okay, Joshua from the future here again. So the question that Joshua in the past was raising is how do you know what Smart Audio version you've got? Here's the answer. And the answer comes from this video put out by Mark Spatz. His YouTube channel is UAV Tech. And if you want really in-depth, like coder level information about Betaflight and black box and filter tuning and stuff, he is the man to go for. There's a link to his channel down in the video description. And what Mark Spatz tells us is that we can find out what smart audio version our VTX is using by going to the black box tab and setting the black box debug mode to smart audio then you're going to go to the sensors tab and if you don't see the sensors tab you want to just go up here and enable expert mode and what i like to do is just hit this gear icon and permanently enable expert mode you're going to go to the sensors tab and you're going to turn on the debug option and in fact i'm just going to turn these all off to clean up the screen for us and the debug option debug zero is going to tell us what smart audio version we're using. So at this exact moment, my VTX is powered down. I'm gonna plug in a battery and watch what happens. And bing, there we go. So now debug zero has gone to a value of 216. And that is telling us that the smart audio version for this VTX is version 2.1. A value of 216 is 2.1. See, if it was smart audio 1.0, it would be 100. If it was Smart Audio 2.0, it would be 2.0. So we now know that our VTX is Smart Audio 2.1. Now that I know that, I'm going to go to the Video Transmitter tab, and I'm going to hit go to this page. And I'm going to download the JSON file for Smart Audio 2.1. Oh, nope, nope, nope. you got to right-click, save link as, and save it. I'm going to load that in. Then I'm not done yet because if you take a look here, the output power levels I have are 25, 100, and 400. But my VTX is actually the Rush Tank Ultimate, which has output powers of 25, 200, 500, and 800. So here's how we work around that. For Smart Audio 2.0 and 2.1, the value here is the output power in dBm. So I'm just going to go to the internet and find a converter to convert milliwatt to dBm. And my output powers are 25, 200, 25, 100. So let's see, we need 200 milliwatts and it's going to be 23 dBm. It's going to be 25, 200, 23 dBm, 500, 500 milliwatts is 27 dBm. We're going to need to have a fourth power level. 
and 800 milliwatts is 29 dBm. 29, is it 29? Yeah, it's pretty close, 29.0. It's gonna be 800 milliwatts. So we're gonna save that. And if you want to, you can save that out to a file and load it into your other quads that are using the same. Say there's your JSON file. So you could call it There we go. If you have Smart Audio 2.0, things are slightly different. In Smart Audio 2.0, the output powers are simply numbered 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. And it's just up to the VTX to know what those output powers are. It'll just be the lowest, the second lowest, and so on output power that the VTX supports. And in Smart Audio 1.0, it I'm not actually even really sure what these levels are 25 milliwatts is about 13 or 14 dBm 200 milliwatts is about is 23 dBm I don't even I don't really even see a correlation between the value and the label for smart audio 1.0 so there you go that is uh, your little tip from Joshua from the future who knows a few things that Joshua in the past didn't and I hope this gives you more complete information about how to get VTX tables set up now although this is still a pain in the butt at least you have the information you need to get the VTX table set up for your exact transmitter. Let's go back to Joshua from the past and let him finish the outro. I actually had a pretty a pretty uh, energetic argument with one of the devs about this decision because I knew that a bunch of people are going to install Betaflight 4.1 and they're going to be confused about why their smart audio isn't working. And here is the argument that was made back as to why this was necessary. Smart audio has the capability of assigning a VTX to any frequency. It's not limited to Fat Shark 1, Fat Shark 2, Fat Shark. It can go to any frequency. So, for example, if we look at the Boscam E band here, we can see that channels E4, E7, and E8 are not configured. And the reason for that is that those channels are not legal to use in the United States. Now, you could go in and you could change that and you could make it possible for your VTX to go onto those channels. I thought the manufacturer locked them out. No, it's smart audio can override that. And this is a case of with great power comes great responsibility. Since smart audio can let the VTX go to any frequency, the Betaflight devs need to wash their hands of any time it's used to break regulations. The Betaflight devs are worried that Betaflight project will get in trouble. And at least one person expressed a concern that like GitHub would take the project down if they were found to be breaking some rules. So by forcing you to configure the VTX table yourself, the Betaflight project can kind of wash their hands of any responsibility for any decisions you make about making your VTX do something it's not supposed to do. But the flip side is that it ships with an, it doesn't, smart audio and tramp telemetry don't work out of the box and you have to go through the process of downloading the VTX table and configuring it before you can use your video transmitter. That is gonna do it for this video. I hope at the after having watched this, you now know how to get your video transmitter working. The short version is go to this page, download your VTX table and load it into the configurator and save it there. And if you don't know what VTX table is correct, like the Rush Tank, what's the correct VTX table? The manufacturer of the VTX needs to publish a VTX table for their VTX. Betaflight has pushed that responsibility back on the manufacturers and the users so that they are not responsible. So if your manufacturer hasn't released one, go hassle them and ask them to try to make one or try to figure it out for yourself. I don't know. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying.